train jumped the rails on the outskirts of Houston. 18 cars piled up. Many of them carried dangerous chemicals, and several of them ate it. Fire struggled to relay water to the scene. Our hydrant was several hundred yards away. Do you want them to come out Macau Road? Yes, sir. Give me two got. more poppers over on the Macau Road side. Fire officials feared another explosion and ordered all the houses in the area evacuated. Fireman Andy Nelson was on a ladder trying to keep another tank from exploding. Fire Chief Jim Honey was unable to find out what was in the boom car. Well, keep your water then. Here, keep it cool as much as you can. Let the fire burn. They think it's it for chloride on fire, but we're going to have to let it burn down. There's nothing we've got here. Put that out. and tank trucks are a common sight. Each day, millions of gallons of cargo are transported in tank containers. Some carry milk, others carry chemicals, many carry fuels. Two of the most common tank cargoes are liquefied flammable gases, such as propane, and flammable liquids, like gasoline. Almost every community has tanks containing flammable liquids and gases traveling its roads and railways daily. These materials are transported from producing plants to storage and distribution centers and are again moved to points of use and resale. Tank containers have grown larger as fuel consumption has increased. Tank trucks carrying as many as 10,000 gallons and jumbo railway tank cars carrying upwards of 30,000 gallons are now common. Both gasoline and propane are transported in a liquid state. Under normal atmospheric pressure, propane is a gas. But for economy of movement and storage, it's liquefied, reducing its volume 270 times. To keep propane as a liquid, pressure must be maintained requiring tanks of greater strength than those used for gasoline. To allow for liquid expansion in case of heating, tanks are never completely filled. Above the liquid level, a space is left, which remains full of vapor. At the top of all tanks are relief devices designed to limit internal pressure. On tank cars, these take the form of relief valves contained in domes which also house fittings used in transfer operations. On tank trucks, relief devices are also located on top, but loading and unloading is most often accomplished from below. Standards for tank design, marking, and placarding, as well as standards for the transportation of hazardous materials, are regulated by state and federal agencies. 
Under normal circumstances, the transportation of liquefied flammable gases is quite safe. But an accident can lead to a special type of explosion, known as a blevy, a boiling, liquid, expanding vapor explosion. In a collision or derailment, liquefied gases can be released, vaporizing immediately. Being heavier than air, they remain close to the ground. A spark or other source of ignition can ignite these vapors, flashing back to the leaking liquid. The fire heats another tank. The liquid inside that tank becomes heated, boils and expands, increasing the pressure within the tank. The relief valve operates to limit the excess pressure. The tank can withstand this pressure only as long as the tank metal retains its design strength. Where flames contact the tank below the liquid level, the liquid acts to absorb the heat, and the tank metal below this point remains at a safe temperature. With continued relief valve operation, the liquid level drops, exposing greater areas of metal to the effects of heating. Flames contacting the tank above the liquid level create temperatures within the metal high enough to weaken it. When this happens, the pressure within the tank can cause the metal to thin and eventually tear. The pressure drops suddenly. Large quantities of boiling liquid vaporize, expand and ignite immediately and tank pieces become flying missiles. Large sections of the tank car can rocket over one half mile and often trail ignited liquid. The ground flash covers an area hundreds of feet in diameter. The blast wave has tremendous force, enough to break windows several miles away. The fireball rises on a thermal column, radiating heat severe enough to cause burns for distances up to 1,000 feet beyond the fireball. This all happens swiftly and without warning. Test, one, two. P&H Railroad Derailment 21274. Approximately 4.10 this afternoon, a 100-car uh, train of the D&H Railroad was traveling through the town of Emmons, just east of Oneonta. 28 cars derailed, eight of them bulk pressurized propane tank cars. Searing hot flames and smoke soaring as high as 150 feet into the air. The scene is a mess with cars strewn all over the railroad. How many firefighters have ever seen a fireball hundreds of feet in diameter? How many have ever seen a 12-ton section of tank car rocket through the air, trailing burning fuel? The traditional fire department approach is to attack and extinguish all fires. Because of the serious nature of blevies, it is recommended that fire departments reevaluate their approach to these transportation accidents. Crescent City, Illinois, June 21, 1970. At 6.30 in the morning, 15 cars of a daily freight train derailed. Nine tank cars were involved. The resulting fire immediately ignited nearby buildings. Firefighters were at first unable to determine the exact contents of the tank cars. Loss of electrical power to pumps made water unavailable to firefighters. Evacuation of the area began shortly after the first alarm. When it was determined that the tanks contained propane, firefighters too moved to safer positions. 63 minutes after derailment, a tank blevied. About two hours later, a second tank blevied and five minutes after that, a third. With limited water supplies exhausted, fire officials decided to withdraw. The two remaining tanks, punctured by rocketing debris, 
were simply allowed to burn until all of the propane was consumed, some 56 hours later. Because of prompt evacuation and caution on the part of firefighters, there were no fatalities. 66 people were, however, injured by the blast and fire. 25 residences were destroyed, and 90% of the Crescent City Business District was demolished. Kingman, Arizona, July 5, 1973. At a gas distribution plant on the outskirts of Kingman, two employees were connecting a single propane tank car to an unloading rack when they noticed a leak. During their attempt to stop the leak, a fire ensued. Upon arrival, firefighters found flames contacting the upper area of the tank and had no way of knowing how long the tank had been exposed. The nearest fire hydrant was about 1,200 feet away. About 10 minutes after firefighters arrived, the tank car blevied. The force of the explosion propelled half of the tank car end over end along the track for 1,200 feet. The initial ground flash, about 400 feet in diameter, caught 13 firemen. 12 of them were killed. 95 people were injured by the blast. Most of them spectators, stopped on the highway some 1,000 feet from the tank site. At Crescent City, life and property exposure was high. Tank contents were not immediately known, and water for cooling was not available. The pileup of tanks multiplied the blevy hazard. Only by the quick evacuation of civilians and the judicious retreat of the fire forces was loss of life avoided. At Kingman, the threat to life and property in the immediate area was minimal. The contents of the tank were known, but water was not readily available. The relief valve was operating, but flames were still impinging on the upper vapor part of the tank and a blevy was possible at any moment. Considering these and other blevies, certain points should be borne in mind by fire officers when judging life safety and other hazards in an accident involving tank containers. Is there fire? If no fire, is there leakage which could result in fire? Knowing the contents of the tanks can be extremely helpful Although under emergency conditions, this information is often not readily available. If there is fire, how long has the tank been exposed to flames? This information is also rarely available to fire officers during the emergency. Some blevies have occurred as early as 10 minutes after initial flame contact. Even though the relief valve is operating, a blevy can still occur. Given the location, what is the threat to life and property? Is civilian evacuation possible? Does the risk to life and property justify endangering the lives of firefighters? How much water is available? The application of water can keep tank metal at safe temperatures, but only if large volumes can be delivered to all points of flame contact. Water application may need to be sustained for several hours. Fire officers are advised to assess carefully the danger to emergency personnel before making a commitment to fighting a fire involving serious blevy hazards. transportation accidents occur with little warning, there are things which firefighters can do. Pre-fire planning can reduce the impact of a blevy. Know on what routes hazardous materials are most frequently transported. 
Examine the potential exposure risk. Evaluate firefighting resources. While many of the dangers of transporting hazardous materials cannot be eliminated, they can be minimized through planning. <laughs> 